digging up and burning coal and gas and oil has presented us with all kinds of benefits that have improved our life enormously. But we know today that air pollution from burning fossil fuels is responsible for 8 million deaths per year. And just for perspective, we have already seen two and a half million lives lost due to COVID. Every life lost prematurely is one too many, but we are losing 8 million every year due to air pollution from burning fossil fuels. And that's not even talking about the impacts of climate change. The best cartoon that I have seen or the most appropriate cartoon is one of a tsunami of COVID with a tsunami of an economic recession behind it with a giant massive tsunami of climate change behind that. We can't afford to let down our guard. Climate change matters today more than ever. Wow, I love that perspective. Thank you for that. Now, we continue to see so many examples of extreme weather as well from severe snowstorms. You know that specifically because you live in, in Texas where we saw the recent snowstorm. Some will say that this is a fluke. The rest of the world will see it as climate change. How do you convince people to really see this as a problem, to see climate change as, pro as a problem? One of the biggest ways climate change is affecting us where we live is by loading the weather dice against us. We always have a chance of rolling a double six, a crazy heat wave, a flood, even a hurricane reaching all the way up to the Maritimes, that happens naturally. But as the planet warms decade by decade, it's like it's sneaking in and taking one of those numbers and then another and another and turning them into sixes and even giving us a seven on our dice. So all of a sudden we're seeing wildfire seasons like California experience with apocalyptic orange skies. We're seeing hurricanes in Texas dropping 50 inches of rain in some places and three 500 year flood events occurring in the same in, in three years. We're seeing record breaking heat waves. We are seeing hurricanes reaching farther north at much greater intensity and much greater strength than they would otherwise. We are seeing global weirding. And that is where climate change is coming in, loading those weather dice against us. We hear now that there was a slight dip in carbon emissions last year during the global lockdown that we all, all experienced. Have we seen the earth kind of replenishing in some places, but not in others? We have seen that our carbon emissions last year dropped significantly. In the month of April, they dropped 17%. And over the whole year, they dropped 7%. And this is encouraging because it shows that if we take action, we can truly make a difference. In fact, if, if that 17% that we saw in April was maintained, we'd be more than a third of the way to our Paris targets by 2030 in just a few weeks. So why aren't we? It's because they weren't achieved in sustainable ways. Shutting down industry, keeping kids out of school, people losing their jobs, shutting down the economy, that's not a sustainable solution. What is? Being more efficient with the way we use our energy and our food. We waste more than half of the energy and more than half the food that we produce. We just waste it. This is true in Canada as well as in the US. We also have to transition to clean energy sources that don't produce the air pollution responsible for 8 million deaths around the planet every year. And we have to figure out how to maintain and preserve and conserve our forests, our natural lands that take up carbon, how to engage in smart agriculture that puts carbon back in the soil where we want it instead of the atmosphere where we don't. All of these things truly can make a difference and they can help here and now as well as in the future. And as you talk about that, Catherine, it's so polarizing. As you know, here in Canada uh, and the US, there are strong feelings when it comes to carbon taxes and pipelines on one hand and climate care on the other. How do we rally Canadians around caring for our environment without it becoming so polarizing when many are concerned about their jobs and their livelihoods? The reality is, is that climate is changing and it affects every single one of us, no matter where we live, in ways that already matter to us. You might love snowmobiling or ice fishing. You might be a birder or a hiker. You might be a new mom or a parent. You might be somebody who um, belongs to a certain faith tradition. Whoever you are, you already have all the values you need to care about climate change. So where does the debate come in? The debate comes in in terms of the solutions. People are scared because solutions involve change. But we have to change because otherwise we are going to have a price tag that we cannot afford to pay. And so that is why, for example, the concept of a just transition is so important. 
And there's many organizations as well as the federal government that are investing in this, like Iron Plus Earth is one of those organizations that is a grassroots organization that trains oil and gas workers to have the skills that they need to get jobs in the new clean energy industry. With people like Warren Buffett building brand new giant wind farms in Alberta, we see that the future is starting to arrive, but we need to transition towards that in a mindful way that does not leave people behind and that does not point fingers of judgment either. We all want a better future. We all want an electricity when we turn the lights on. We all want water to come out when we turn the tap on. And so working together, I truly believe that we are going to be able to fix these problems. But it begins by building bridges rather than digging trenches. On that note, and my last question, climate action is high on our current government's platform here in Canada. Can Canada's contribution really make a difference when we see other countries really putting it on the back burner? As a Canadian, one of the questions I often hear is, we're just such a small country population wise, why do we matter? Well, it turns out in terms of cumulative carbon emissions, we're on the top 10 list. Yes, we are. Of mm. course, the US is there and China is there, but we are on that top 10 list too. We can make a difference. And here's the interesting thing. When I go and, or when I talk to people in Norway, they say, oh, we're such a small country, why do we matter? I talk to people in Ireland, they say, we're such a small country, why do I matter? I talk to people in the US, they say, oh, we're such a small country compared to China, why do we matter? And then you talk to people in China and they say, oh, per person, we produce almost nothing compared to you people in Canada and the US, why do we matter? The reality is we all matter. Every little bit counts and we can all do something to make a difference. And that change begins at home, it begins with us and it begins with something as simple as having a conversation today about why climate change matters, how it's affecting us right here where we live and what are some sensible things that every single one of us can do to help not only support provincial and federal action but to make changes in our lives, our businesses, our schools, our place of worship, our communities as well. Because we all live here together and like I said, we all want a better future. Oh, I love it, Catherine. You put things in such great perspective and make me feel like I can do something. I can change. I can change the world. Thank you so much, Catherine Hayhoe, for your time today. Thank you.